start. Hello, dear students. I am happy to be back with another important video uh, where I will explain about another important uh, provident fund scheme which is available to the uh, public, uh, which is very popularly known as public provident fund. So far in my previous videos, I have explained you about the provident fund schemes which are available to the employees of government sector as well as private sector. But uh, there are people in our society who do not uh, belong to both the sectors, be it uh, government sector or private sector. So what about those people who do not have the privilege of getting any pension or any benefits of uh, SPF, RPF or any such uh, provident fund schemes. So the answer for such question is. There is a fund, there is a scheme which is very beneficial, very popular, uh, which is going to meet the needs of those common mans in the public and uh, which is going to help uh, every citizen of this country and that fund is Public Provident Fund. Uh, as you know, uh, already we have learned that uh, these type of schemes will help the people to secure their uh, life after the retirement. So similarly in the, in the case of PPF also, anybody I repeat anybody for that matter, any person of this society, any person of this community uh, above the age of 18 or below the age of 18 can participate in this public provident fund scheme and can get the benefit of having a secured life after retirement or after the age of 60. So what exactly happens in this public provident fund? It is a very simple scheme, very simple uh, retirement plan uh, where you need to just open a uh, provident fund account with any nationalized banker uh, means uh, the uh, SBI or it may be Karnataka Bank or it may be uh, Bank of Baroda any such nationalized banks we have in India in those banks you can open the account uh, in order to help the people of this country only this uh, public provident fund scheme was introduced in the year 1968 uh, in the finance act so after that this scheme has become very popular because you can open this PPF account as I mentioned in, as I mentioned in any uh, nationalized bank with just a minimum of rupees 500. You just need to deposit 500 rupees and open an account in any bank or in any recognized post offices. You can you can become the member of public provident fund. So minimum of rupees 500. And if you are capable of investing more, you can invest more and it may go up to a maximum of rupees 150,000. So by investing this much of amount every year, you can become the member of PPF and you can uh, regularly invest that much of amount every year and you can receive the interest on that and the fund grows there also like any other PF accounts. So ultimately at the time of your retirement or uh, after crossing the age of 60 or as per the terms of this fund, you can receive a lump sum amount and you can use it for your uh, various purposes what you have in life okay so a very important thing about this uh, or very important provisions of, provisions of this scheme let me tell you one by one so as i said one is opening the account in the nationalist bank with a minimum of rupees 500 so once you open the account uh, after opening the account every year you have to invest the same amount or you can increase the amount that provision is there in addition to that while opening the account you have to mention the term and the term is 15 years once you open the account, you can withdraw the money or you can get the money back from this fund is only after 15 years. And in case of emergency, you can withdraw the money, that provision is also there. But the thing is that a minimum of 5 years you must have completed. So only after completing 5 years, you can withdraw the money. Up to 5 years, you can't withdraw the money. That's a problem or maybe a condition of this scheme. So after 15 years, if you want to continue with the deposit, means you don't need the money at the end of 15 years, you want to continue with the investment, it is also possible. But once you decide to continue, that will be for another 5 years. Once you once you complete the term of 15 years, if you want to continue, that will be for another 5 years, a block of 5 years. So that's how it works. And uh, the amount whatever you deposit in this fund, as it is once in a year plan, means whatever amount you deposit in this fund, it is once in a year. Normally it is once in a year, but if you are not capable of investing, in one, uh, investing once in a year, you have another option also. You can... Uh, deposit in lump sum or you can deposit in installments also not exceeding 12 in a year so uh, once in a month for 12 months you can invest the money in this uh, public provident fund scheme that is also available and the present rate of interest what you get for this PPF, PPF investment falls around 8 to 9 percent presently so investing that much of amount in any nationalized bank uh, uh, from 500 to 150,000 
and depositing it in lump sum or in installments and receiving interest at the rate of 8 to 9 percent and uh, after, after the completion of uh, 15 years you will get the money back along with lot of returns. So very big lump sum amount you get once you complete the 15 years term. So this is how the PPF account works. And when it comes to the benefit for the taxpayers, what exactly happens when it, when, when it is a case of calculating tax? So there are three important aspects. One is the contribution you make to this fund. Whatever the money you deposit into this PPF account is exemptible from tax, the first exemption. The second one, the interest what you receive. Every year you receive annual interest on this account. So the interest you receive is also exempt from tax just like any other PF account you have. And the third one is about the lump sum amount you get, uh, you get at the end of the term. So that is also all the three amounts or all the three returns you get from this fraud and fund is fully exempt from tax. That is the beauty of this PPF account. So it is very popular because it is almost all like the SPF, the one which is available to the government employees. So lot of benefits, highest advantages are there, are there in this fund. That's why this fund is meant for all the people who are in the public. Anybody can participate, no restriction at all. Even government employees can participate in this. And as I said, exemption is available for almost all the returns you get from this account. And the last one is that is regarding the eligibility for claiming deduction. Anyhow, you get the exemption for the contribution you make, the interest you receive or the lump sum amount you receive upon the completion of the term. In addition to that, every year, whatever the money you deposit into this PF account is highly qualified for deduction under section 80C. So, already I have told you about the 80C, a very important deduction available for the SACs for reducing their tax burden. Just like SPF, RPF and ASF, in the case of PPF also, the amount of money you contribute is qualified for deduction under section 80C. So, to that extent, you can reduce your tax burden. Uh, one more important thing I will tell you. In case if you fail to continue with the deposits every year, in any year, if you discontinue the investment, then you still have the provision of continuing after paying the fine. It will fall around rupees 50 per year. And by paying that fine for those years where you had lapses, you can continue with the fraud and fund schemes. So that is also available. That option is also there. So ultimately this scheme or this uh, fund is purely meant for those people who do not belong to private sector jobs or government sector jobs. Any farmer, any uh, labor, any worker, any agriculturist, so any teacher, anybody can participate to this fund so that he will get the benefit of receiving some lump sum amount at the end of the, uh, uh, maybe, maybe at the age of 16 or after the completion of 15 years. So people are free to invest in this, people are free to get the benefit of this and a very popular fund compared to the URPF or ASF. So with this I conclude the explanation on the public provident fund. Uh, hope you uh, enjoy watching this video. Thank you.